Thanks for joining us again. We're going to talk about the quadratus femoris and we're actually looking at lateral rotation. So if you think about the position of her thigh right now, uh, basically it's anatomical position and we flexed the lower leg or leg at the knee joint. So I'm going to abduct the thigh slightly and then we're just going to check to see how much motion she has of the thigh. Okay, so the thigh is laterally rotating or externally rotating in the transverse plane. And you can see that that's pretty good motion there. Um, there's definitely, it can be improved, but she's able to go to about here before that pelvis on the right side wants to start coming up. So we're gonna focus on quadratus femoris today and that's a really important muscle for lateral rotation, both in this position and also when the thigh is in flexion. So you have to imagine that uh, she's now turned over and the thigh is flexed and then turning that thigh out in that position. Let's bend both these there. Okay, so just to give you a sense of where we're gonna be here, um, let me fix this for you. Bring that down, there you go. Um, the pelvis um, is here, and we're going to focus on, I'll show you the, the left side, I'm going to of course work on the right side, but uh, we're basically going to come in right in through here, and you have to go pretty deep and feel for the fibers of the quadratus femoris as they come on to that area of the pelvis there. Okay, and you'll feel those fibers, they basically are perpendicular to the femur there, okay, or the shaft of the femur. So we're going to feel for those fibers, we're going to go pretty deep, and then we're going to compress the tissue right into the lateral aspect of the pelvis here, okay, and then from there, the muscle's going to take a bit of an angle over to the what would be called the intertrochantic crest. So it's going to be right in through here. So it's going to be superior to the lesser trochanter. And of course we know that the greater trochanter is through here. So we're going to be right on this posterior surface. And if you look at a, a book, a textbook, you'll see it's called the intertrochantic crest. So that's the quadratus femoris again running in this direction and of course shortening and pulling the femur into what we would call lateral rotation. So it's one of the deep six lateral rotators and unfortunately it doesn't get the respect it deserves because we tend to hear about piriformis and we can palpate um, five of the deep six lateral rotators and piriformis is only one of them or one of the deep six and it tends to get the most attention. So you can see here that I'm feeling for the lateral aspect of the pelvis and you can see I'm right in that gluteal fold and I have to dive pretty deep there to really feel for those fibers of the quadratus femoris. So again, you're kind of right in that gluteal fold, feeling for the fibers of the quadratus femoris. And then once we feel those fibers, we're gonna compress the tissue right into the lateral aspect of the bone there. And you might remember if you saw the video where we did the gluteus maximus, um, her glute tends to want to uh, jump here, which is kind of normal for her. It's like a twitch, um, a twitching of the muscle. So it's not that she's cringing in pain or anything, it's just that that muscle is uh, twitching. So we're dressing all along the lateral aspect of the bone here. And then as you continue to move up, 
you're going to eventually feel for the inferior gemellus or gemellus inferior. I'm going to go back down to the beginning here and make sure just kind of fine tune my palpation here now that I've made one pass. Okay, so then we're going to go over to that posterior femur. Okay, so we're basically going to be, like I mentioned before, superior to the lesser trochanter and inferior to the greater trochanter on the posterior side of the femur. So we'll come, again, it's going to come on an angle. If you're not sure where to find or how to find the trochanter, you basically just come on to the top of the trochanter there and you can kind of use the lower leg as a lever and drive the femur with the lower leg to feel for that trochanter. Then we're going to just kind of slide right up onto the posterior side of the femur there. and we're going to go right down onto the intertrochantic crest there. We can actually kind of use the femur or the lower leg here as a little lever to rotate the femur to really kind of nail or find where we want to be or where those fibers come right on to that intertrochantic crest. So we're going right down onto the posterior side of the femur. So we're trying to address those attachments right where they come on to that intertrochantic crest. Okay, so then we can actually immediately rotate the femur a little bit and that allows us to kind of curl our fingers around or the fingers around to the medial side of that proximal posterior femur there. We'll pick up some more attachments there. This is a good spot right here. Okay, so from there, we're going to go back and check range of motion. So I'm going to take the bolster out. And 
let's do a little abduction again. And then we're just going to do the lateral rotation here. Okay. So you can see that she has a little bit more motion now without the pelvis moving. And it's not a tremendous amount, but if you really look at the quality of motion, the quality is a lot better getting into the position. So the lower leg is closer to the opposite thigh there, and the quality of motion to get there is a lot better. Okay, so that's quadratus femoris, and like I said, you can actually palpate five of the deep six lateral rotators um, but the one that tends to get the most attention is piriformis. So it's something to think about. Thank you.